We're going to talk about the Hyde Amendment and then age restrictions on abortion. Before we get into that, make sure that you subscribe in the bottom right hand corner. It's just right there on the screen. And if you have already subscribed, like or comment or just basically show YouTube that you appreciate the content that I'm giving and I would really appreciate it. So the Hyde Amendment, which was passed in 1977, is basically an attempt to restrict federal funding or taxpayer money that goes towards abortions. Now, the most common form of this is, again, through the Medicaid program. So it essentially says if you're on Medicaid, you cannot use that to pay for abortion except in three extreme cases. So it's not true that it never pays for abortion. It doesn't. It just doesn't in most cases. So the three cases where it is an exception are rape, incest, or life endangerment. So if you are on the Medicaid program and one of those three cases does apply to you, presumably uh, the Hyde Amendment would not apply and you could use federal dollars to pay for your abortion. What's more is that there are some 17 states that have their own uh, policy where they use state funding to pay for abortions beside what the Hyde Amendment requires. So what that basically means is that they specify that if it's a medically necessary abortion, you can use the state funding to pay for your abortion. And medically necessary, you may think that makes sense and it's just life of the mother, but it's not very clear because the Hyde Amendment specifically says life endangerment and the, those state requirements just say medically necessary. So that leaves me to believe that medically necessary is not as strict as life endangerment. So, so there are 17 states where you can use state funding to pay for abortions, and it seems to be a less strict requirement than using federal funding. So the reason that I wanted to talk about the Hyde Amendment today is because it's been in the news a lot because of what some of the Democratic candidates have said about it. And actually not just some of them, most of them. So there are currently 24 Democratic candidates running for president in 2020. And I'm sure they won't all you know, last quite that long. But out of the 24 who are in the race right now, 21 of them have come out in support of repealing the Hyde Amendment. Essentially, that means that 21 of the 24 Democrats have said that they would be okay or they would want taxpayer money to go towards abortions. Now, to be fair, they haven't, at least most of them haven't specified what, if any, restrictions would be around there. Um, so it's possible they wouldn't want it in every single case. But the very fact that they want to repeal the Hyde Amendment, which limits it to those very extreme cases, just kind of shows you how these Democratic candidates feel about abortion. So again, just to repeat, 21 of them are in favor of taxpayer money going to fund abortions. 21 out of 24. That's a really, that's a high number. That's only three of them have not vocally come out in support. And that doesn't mean they don't support it. They just haven't said it yet. The last thing that we're going to talk about are the age restrictions when it comes to abortion. Now, this was honestly really surprising to me. I didn't expect it to be quite this high. But if you are a 16 year old and you want to get an abortion in 24 states, you do not need to have parental consent to get an abortion. So in roughly half of the United States, your parents do not have to approve for you to get an abortion if you're 16, and in some cases younger. Now, that seems like an extreme position to me. And I want to contrast that with a movie that came out just a couple months ago called Unplanned. And if you haven't heard about it, this movie is about a Planned Parenthood worker, Abby Johnson, who eventually quit and became a pro-life activist. Now, because of a few of the scenes where they in some way show an abortion, this movie got an R rating. And an R rating means you can't see it unless you're 17 or older, or you're at least with someone who is. So essentially what that means is if you compare the R rating of this movie to the ability to get an abortion, in roughly half of the United States, you do not need to have your parent accompany you to get an abortion, but you do need a parent, guardian, or someone older than you to come with you to see a movie about abortions. Now again, that just seems like it's a little bit extreme to me. So I wanted to just throw that out there and give you the information so you can form your own opinions about it. Now that's all I wanted to do for this video. I will try and do a new topic next week because I've done abortion three times now. Um, hopefully it's been good and you've appreciated getting the information. 
But again, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff, and just be on the lookout for my next video. Thanks for watching, everybody.